My name's Daniel Roy, and today I'm going to teach you the most important technique in all of magic, how to hold a deck of cards. Now, it might seem rather pedantic to spend so much time thinking so deeply about how to hold a deck of cards, but these grips are foundational to every other technique in magic. And if you don't learn them correctly now, you'll develop bad habits which will eventually get in your way. Then you'll have to come back, unlearn those bad habits, and learn it correctly all over again. So it's in your interest to learn these fundamental grips correctly the first time around. Now, we need to talk about handedness. I'm right-handed, which means I hold the deck from above in my right hand and from below in my left hand. If you're left-handed, you'll do this the other way around. You'll hold the cards from above in your left hand and from below in your right hand. With handedness, what matters is that you are consistent, and here's why. Let's say you learn one technique right-handed and you learn another technique left-handed. Well, what happens when those two techniques show up back-to-back -back in the same trick? Well, now you have to do one of them this way and then awkwardly change grips and do the other one this way. This looks very suspicious, and sometimes it's physically impossible to do. So it's very important that you learn all your techniques with a consistent handedness. I'm right-handed, so I will teach everything right-handed. Now the first grip that we're going to learn is called left hand dealing position, which looks like this. Three fingers, the left second, third, and fourth fingers are on this side of the deck. The left index finger is at the front, and the left thumb lies along the side of the deck. Now you'll notice that these fingers are not so far up the deck that they're clawing over the top, but they're also not so far down that the cards can spill out like this. You want the tips of the second, third, and fourth fingers to protrude just above the top edge of the deck. The same is true of the left index finger. You don't want it too low, and you also don't want it way too high. You want that tip to just come above the edge of the deck. Now, very importantly, these cards are not too far down in the hand. Likewise, they are not so far up that they're above the base of the thumb. Rather, they're held against the base of the thumb with horizontal pressure from the left fourth finger. And you can see there's some space under the deck, not too little, and also not too much. This is very much a Goldilocks zone that you'll have to find for your own hands, but it's important that at least some of the flesh of the base of the thumb is above the deck, and it's important that you have at least some space down here below the deck. Notice that the cards are not shifted so far back in the hand that the index finger is struggling to even grip the deck. They're also not shifted so far forward in the hand that the index finger can't curl around the outer edge. You want the left index finger to be curled around the outer end in a relaxed fashion, and you want there to be just a little bit of space between the base of the index finger and the deck. You don't want it to be all the way pressed up like this. Also, notice that these three fingers are not all scrunched up at this edge. They're also not all scrunched up at the back corner here. They lie relatively evenly spaced along the side so that the middle finger is somewhat close to this outer right corner and the fourth finger is somewhat close to this inner right corner. In addition, there is also some horizontal pressure between the left fourth finger and the base of the left thumb. There's some light horizontal pressure here. The third finger can help out with that a little bit as well. But where does the deck actually rest in the palm? It rests in these specific positions. Along this left edge, the deck lies along this crease in the palm. For me, it's slightly above this actual crease, but it's this sort of line in the palm here along which the deck lies. And on the right side, the right lower edge of the deck more or less follows the creases of these fingers, although for me it does lie a little bit below them, and it's not exactly the same for each finger. The reason I'm being somewhat vague is that the exact positioning of the deck in your hand will depend on the structure of your hand, the shape of your palm, the length of your fingers, the texture of your skin, and all of those factors will determine the exact points at which the deck will rest. So I can tell you where it rests in my hands, but you're gonna have to figure it out for your hands, although it should be somewhat similar to mine. The point I'm making is that you should be able to identify exactly where the deck rests in your hands, and just understand that one edge of the deck is going to rest somewhere along these fingers, and the other edge of the deck is going to rest somewhere along the palm, and there will be a little bit of space underneath it. So you should feel like the deck is supported on this side by these fingers where it rests there, and on this side by somewhere around this area of the palm. So this is left hand dealing position. Now in terms of how tightly to hold the cards, you want to imagine that you're holding a bird. Hold the cards tightly enough that the bird can't fly away, but not so tightly that you'd crush the wings. That's one of my favorite analogies, and it comes from Card College by Roberto Giobi. Now the next grip that we're going to talk about is called right hand end grip. Here's how you get there. Start with the cards in left hand dealing position. Now extend the left index finger under the deck, so it now lies underneath the deck. This frees up all the space on the outer edge of the deck. The right hand now approaches from above, 
and the right second, third, and fourth fingers are going to go at this outer end, the right thumb will go at the inner end, and the right index finger will curl on top. And so you are going to lift the deck up like this. So in end grip, you've got three fingers at this outer end, the thumb at the inner end, and the index finger curled on top. Now a few important points. Notice that these three fingers are curled such that the tips protrude below the edge of the deck. The same is true of the thumb. You don't want these fingers so they're just barely holding onto the cards such that you could almost drop them. You want enough of the flesh of the tips of the fingers and the thumb protruding below the deck that you can easily hold onto the cards. You also want the index finger curled such that the nail of the index finger touches the top of the deck and this first knuckle can just lightly touch the top of the deck. You don't want your index finger all the way out here. It just looks inelegant. You want it so it's lightly pressed up against the side of the middle finger. Also, you don't want to hold the deck so vertically like this that there are these gaps between your fingers. You want to take the heel of the right hand and rotate it down. By rotating the heel of the right hand downward like this, you press these fingers together as they turn at an angle. The same is true of the right index finger and the thumb as well. It makes the grip a little bit more elegant. It also provides better coverage over the deck and it fully covers this front edge of the deck with these fingers. So previously when holding the deck overly vertically, you can see these gaps. And when you tilt the hand down like this, now those gaps are covered. And this is how you want to hold the cards in end grip. Now we need to put the cards back in left hand dealing position. Here's how we're going to do that. Hold the deck in end grip and you're going to bring the cards over the left hand and you will start by aligning this edge with the base of the thumb. So you align this edge with the base of the left thumb. Now the left second, third, and fourth fingers come in and grip the deck at the side. Then you release the right hand and the left index finger comes and grips the cards at the outer edge. And now you are holding the cards in left hand dealing position. The reason for getting the index finger out of the way is because if you don't, then these three fingers of the right hand sort of run into this finger as you're trying to pick up the deck. And it's inelegant and it will be problematic in future techniques. So you just wanna extend this finger under the deck and then pick up the deck and end grip put the cards back, and then you bring the index finger back in. Of course, you wanna to aim to put the cards back in exactly the same position they would normally be in, in left hand dealing position, for your hands, of course, and that will depend on the structure of your hands. So this is the first exercise that you should practice in card magic. Starting with a deck in left hand dealing position, you're going to extend the left index finger under the deck, the right hand comes over and grips the deck in end grip, three fingers at the front, thumb at the back, index finger curls on top, and then you pick the deck up, holding it in end grip, and then you're going to put the cards back in left hand dealing position, aligning this side with the base of the thumb. These three fingers come in here, the right hand releases, and the index finger curls at the outer end so that the cards are back in left hand dealing position. And now just practice going back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Try to be precise and intentional as you grip the cards each time. This is the most boring exercise you'll ever do, but it is by far the most valuable in all of card magic. This transition between left hand dealing position and right hand end grip is the most fundamental movement in all of sleight of hand with cards, and you need to be able to do it well. How should you practice? Well, the answer is slowly, very, very slowly. Try to imagine that your hands are submerged in a pot of honey. So when I practice this exercise, here is the speed at which I practice. that slowly. This slow pace allows you to pay attention to the position of each finger, to the movements of each joint, so you can be very precise and intentional with your movements. As you get better, you can start to move a little bit more quickly, and then a little bit more quickly, but if you notice bad habits start to creep in, slow right back down to that snail's pace, fix the problem, and then ramp up again. 
Eventually, you should try to practice faster than you ever would in a real performance. That way, when you're actually performing for people, it feels like you're going in slow motion, which of course is what you want because that'll make it feel easier. But the key is start slowly and then very slowly ramp up. Now, left hand dealing position isn't just one grip, it's a family of related grips, all with different purposes. And the same is true of right hand end grip. Now, one important variation of left hand dealing position is what's called elevated dealing position. So to go from left hand dealing position to elevated dealing position, here's what you do. You're going to take the left index finger and curl it under the deck. Then you're going to slightly relax these fingers, just slightly, and you're also going to relax the base of the left thumb. By doing so, you can allow the cards to move away from the base of the thumb. You can see they're in contact with the base of the thumb and now they've moved away, but they're still resting on the nail of the left index finger like this. Now, once you've moved the cards away from the base of the thumb, you're just going to extend the left index finger and it's going to lever the cards upward and then you simply put the thumb back on the side. So now you're holding the cards in what's called an elevated dealing position. You still have these three fingers on the side, the thumb tip now contacts the left side of the deck and the left index finger is now curled underneath the deck like so. And you can see how there's all this space under the deck. So the cards are elevated up out of dealing position. Now to go back into left hand dealing position, it's really easy. You just extend the left index finger and then just release the thumb and the cards literally fall right back into dealing position. And then you just use these fingers and the index finger to pull the cards back into position and you're back in left hand dealing position. So once again, to go from left hand dealing position to elevated dealing position, you curl the left index finger under the deck, you relax these three fingers and relax the base of the thumb, you extend the index finger, and then the thumb grips the cards here. Now notice that when you extend this index finger, if the index finger was way over here near these fingers, it's almost impossible to raise the deck. Of course, there's only so far you can bring it over to the left side of the deck because your index finger just doesn't have that much mobility. But as long as you're able to get the nail of the index finger to be at least halfway across the deck or potentially even two thirds of the way across, so somewhere around this region, that will actually make it much easier to raise the deck up. This is why it's almost impossible to open a door if you try to push right near the hinge because the farther away the point at which you apply force is from the fulcrum, the more torque that you can apply to the door. And this is actually exactly what's happening with the deck of cards. So you can imagine that this edge of the deck, this right edge is the hinge and where you curl the left index finger is essentially the door handle. And wherever the nail of your index finger pushes, that's like pushing on the door handle, raising the deck up, like opening a door. And then once the cards are about here, your left thumb contacts the cards. Once again, to bring them back to left hand dealing position, just get the left index finger out of the way, release the thumb, let the cards fall, and then grip the cards again. Now notice that when the thumb contacts the cards here, uh, the tip of the thumb, protrudes just above the edge of the deck. So it's not down here where the cards could all fall, but it's also not so far up that the cards aren't really in an elevated dealing position. You're aiming to use the pad of the left thumb to contact this side of the deck and just have enough of the tip of the thumb protruding above that the cards won't fall if you turn your hand over. Now, as you get better, at moving the deck from left hand dealing position into elevated dealing position, you can smooth out the action a little bit. Instead of having to take this left thumb entirely off the side of the deck, after you bring your left index finger under the cards, you can simply relax the base of the thumb and relax these fingers, but you can leave your left thumb tip in contact with the deck. Then as you extend the left index finger, you can simply slide the thumb tip backwards along the side of the card so it lands in position. So it started here, and it simply slides up to here as the cards are levered upwards, like so. One thing that helps this is that you don't keep the hand totally flat. Rather, you slightly turn the hand to the side as you begin to lever the deck up. This just makes your life easier as you're levering the cards up and it also makes it easier to slide your thumb into place. Then, if you need to, you can turn the cards back this way or this way or this way or whatever is required for elevated dealing position. So it's simply this action of curling the left index finger underneath elevating the deck, and then sliding the left thumb tip into place. So that is elevated dealing position. Now let's talk about a variation of right hand end grip. Usually when we're transferring the deck to end grip, 
we take the cards in what's called a covered end grip or a closed end grip, where these three fingers are along this front side. You'll notice that the entire front edge of the deck is obscured and my hand is for the most part covering the deck. However, we could also take the cards in what's called an open end grip or an uncovered end grip, where instead of the thumb and the middle finger going over on the left sides of the deck, they go to the extreme right edges. So they're not literally on the corners, but they're just off of these corners on the right side of the cards, and they lift the deck up like this. Now everything about where the tips of the fingers are and how they protrude below the deck still applies, but this is just a much more uncovered end grip because the hand, rather than being here, is all the way over here. So this is just another variation of end grip. And of course, there are intermediates between these two positions. You could kind of have a grip that's sort of in the middle and that's useful at times. And other times you'll need this closed, very covered end grip as well. But just understand that this is a useful position as well, and that will come into play in some other techniques later on. Now, when we talk about sleight of hand, we're not just talking about our hands. We're also talking about our wrists, our elbows, our shoulders, and the rest of our body. And we have to pay attention to all of it. If you, for example, normally sit like this with your elbows at your sides, shoulders relaxed, and then when you pick up a deck of cards, you suddenly sit like this, well, it already starts to look pretty suspicious. So if you notice that your chest is crunching over or your elbows are flaring out, what you can do is you can use the muscle in your back to pull your shoulder blades down and to squeeze your shoulder blades together. This helps to draw your elbows into your side and it also helps to expand your chest. Now, of course, don't overdo this just like anything else, but this can be a helpful tidbit if you find yourself crunching over or if you find your elbows flaring out too much. So left hand dealing position and right hand end grip are the two most fundamental grips in all of card magic. They're extremely important and they're well worth every moment that you can possibly spend practicing them because they will come up time and again as you learn more advanced techniques and routines. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel or following me on social media. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I teach magicians of all levels. Or if you want to book a show, you can contact me by email or on my website. Links are in the description. See you next time.